Grocery shopping is always a time consuming chore and I've been known to sometimes spend upwards of 15 minutes just trying to pick a type of yogurt as I comb through the nutrition facts panel on every option available. Now there's a ton of information in that nutrition facts panel and it can get pretty overwhelming, but there is evidence to suggest that there are benefits to using that information in making your food decisions. One study showed that about 60% of US adults reported to using the nutrition facts panel and this is associated with healthier diets. Today I'm going to walk you through how to use the information on the nutrition facts panel to help you make healthy food choices. And I'll also talk about how the nutrition facts panel is going to be redesigned for the future. Hey Nourishable, Dr. Lara here. The nutrition facts panel on food packages is one place that consumers can look to learn more about the food that they eat. It is regulated by the Food and Drug Administration, or the FDA, in the United States. The goal of the nutrition facts panel is to help consumers make informed decisions about the food that they purchase and eat so that they can maintain healthy lifestyles. I'm filming this episode on November 2nd of 2017, which puts us at a really interesting place in the history of the nutrition facts panel. In the spring of 2016, the FDA announced the new redesign for the Nutrition Facts Panel, and this is the first major overhaul since the 1990s. And food companies have the deadline of January 1st, 2020, in order to apply this new redesign to their food packages. And I'll use this package of Parmesan garlic and herb pita chips to learn about the Nutrition Facts Panel. Starting from the very top, we first see the serving size information. For these pita chips, one serving is considered to be 28 grams, or about 11 pita chips. Below that is stated how many servings are in one package. So in this bag of pita chips, there are eight servings. And this is really important information to take into consideration because frequently we eat more than one serving in a sitting. I personally would be inclined to eat the entire bag all at once. The rest of the information on the Nutrition Facts panel is expressed per one serving. Looking below, we see the number of calories in one serving. And calories are a measure of the energy in the food. We see that one serving of pita chips yields 130 calories. If I were to eat the whole bag in one sitting, that would be 130 calories per serving times eight servings equals just over 1,000 calories. One of the changes that I applied in the new 2020 redesign of the Nutrition Facts panel is that they are going to be updating serving sizes to more accurately reflect the serving size that we actually eat. Also, if an entire food pack size is likely to be eaten in one sitting, then all the nutrition information also has to be presented for the entire food package. For example, both a 12 ounce can and a 20 ounce bottle of soda would be considered one serving because we typically consume the entire thing at once. To the right of the number of calories per serving, you'll also see that the current nutrition facts panel reports the number of calories from fat. And this is somewhat a relic from the low fat craze of the 1980s and 1990s. Current nutrition information indicates that the total amount of fat in the diet isn't as important, but the type of fat is. So the new nutrition facts panel is no longer going to state the calories from fat because it's not really important in how we evaluate the food. The next section is going to report information for each macronutrient as well as sodium, and it will report the percent daily value. The percent daily value tells you how much a nutrient in a serving of food contributes to a daily diet. 2,000 calories a day is used for general nutrition advice, though you may have a higher or lower energy requirement depending on your body composition and your physical activity level. Total fat is listed in bold and it will state both the number of grams of fat as well as the percent daily value. In these pita chips, they have 5 grams of fat which contributes about 8% of your daily value. Within total fat, food producers are required to state the grams of saturated fat and the grams of trans fat. And then producers can voluntarily state the amount of monounsaturated fat and polyunsaturated fat. It's mandatory to state both saturated fat and trans fat because these are nutrients of public health significance. Nutrients that Americans tend to consume too much of and it's increasing our risk of disease. Diets that are high in saturated fat increase LDL cholesterol or the bad cholesterol and also increases your risk of developing cardiovascular disease. The 2015 Dietary Guidelines for Americans recommended consuming no more than 10% of your total daily calories of saturated fat. 
chips, that works out to about 22 grams of saturated fat per day. These pita chips have zero grams of saturated fat, so they won't be contributing at all to that percent daily value. Trans fats also increase the LDL or bad cholesterol and increase your risk of cardiovascular disease. Trans fats in our food supply can come from natural sources such as dairy and beef, as well as from industrial sources such as partially hydrogenated oils. Currently, a product can say that it's trans fat free if it has less than 0.5 grams of trans fat per serving. And this doesn't sound so bad until you consider that frequently Americans are eating much more than one serving of a food at a time. So if each serving of the food has half a gram of trans fat in it, that amount of trans fat could really start to add up and be detrimental for our health. So if you really want to know if your food has any industrial produced trans fats in it, take a look at the ingredients list to see if there are any partially hydrogenated oils. In June of 2015, the FDA removed the GRAS status of partially hydrogenated oils. GRAS stands for Generally Recognized as Safe. So the FDA is saying it is no longer safe for food to contain these industrial produced trans fats. The FDA has given food producers the deadline of June 18th, 2018 to remove partially hydrogenated oils from their foods. Below is listed the amount of cholesterol as well as the percent daily value of cholesterol. The goal is to consume less than 300 milligrams of cholesterol per day. And these pita chips have zero milligrams of cholesterol in them, so they're not contributing at all to that percent daily value. Below cholesterol is sodium, a mineral that makes up sodium chloride or table salt in our diet. Sodium is a nutrient of public health significance because Americans tend to consume too much sodium in their diets. The dietary guidelines recommend to limit sodium consumption to 2300 milligrams per day or less. Diets that are high in sodium increase the risk of hypertension or high blood pressure. It's especially important to pay attention to how much sodium is in packaged foods. The majority of sodium that Americans consume is from packaged foods and not so much from the salt that we season our meals with. One serving of these pita chips has 270 milligrams of sodium. So if I were to eat the entire package at once, that would be about 2,000 milligrams of sodium, almost my entire day's worth of sodium in one snack. Next, total carbohydrates are listed. There are two mandatory subcategories of carbohydrates that the Nutrition Facts panel has to list, and these are dietary fiber and sugars. Dietary fiber are long, complex carbohydrates that occur naturally in plants and can also be synthetically produced and added into our food. Overall, Americans don't consume enough dietary fiber. Dietary fiber can play some pretty important roles in our health. There are different types of fiber with different functions. Some types of fiber will help dampen spikes in blood glucose, lower blood cholesterol, nourish the microbiome, which are all those bacteria living inside of our gut, reduce the risk of developing colon cancer, and also help aid in gastrointestinal health by increasing laxation and increasing fecal bulk. Yep, I mean bigger poops. We should aim to consume at least 28 grams of fiber per day. Next, within the category of carbohydrates, are listed sugars. The current Nutrition Facts panel lumps all type of simple sugars together, both those naturally occurring sugars in a food, as well as added sugars. For example, an apple contains natural sugars, and a soda contains added sugars. The 2015 Dietary Guidelines recommended limiting your added sugar consumption to less than 10% of total daily calories. So for a 2,000 calorie diet, that would work out to about 50 grams of sugar. Now that may seem like a lot of sugar, but this 20 ounce bottle of Coca-Cola has 65 grams of sugar, 15 more grams than your daily recommended cap. Currently, Americans consume too much added sugar. The change that I'm the most excited about in the new Nutrition Facts panel is that foods will be required to state the number of grams of added sugar in their product. In the current Nutrition Facts panel, you can't differentiate between naturally occurring sugars and added sugars. So the best you can do is take a look at the ingredients list to see if there's any types of sugar in the ingredients. The higher the ingredient is in the list, the more abundant that ingredient is in the product. And note that sugar can go by many different names. It can be sugar, sucrose, glucose fructose, dextrose, and high fructose corn syrup. Now you may notice that on this bag of pita chips, it says that it has 18 grams of total carbohydrates, but we see only one gram of sugar and one gram of dietary fiber. So what happens to the other 16 grams? Food producers aren't required to list every type of carbohydrate in their product. 
So these pita chips most likely contain 16 grams of starch. The last nutrient listed in this section is protein. Protein is also a type of macronutrient that gives us energy. And you'll see that protein is listed in grams, but that there's no percent daily value. And that's actually because Americans tend not to be deficient in protein. Finally, in the last section, food producers are required to list four micronutrients, vitamin A, vitamin C, iron, and calcium. Last time that the Nutrition Facts panel was updated back in the 1990s, Americans tended not to consume enough vitamin A and vitamin C. However, currently in the US, vitamin A and vitamin C insufficiency is not common at all. So the new Nutrition Facts panel is no longer gonna require those two to be listed. Iron and calcium are still considered nutrients of public health significance because Americans tend not to consume enough of them. We need to consume enough iron in order to avoid anemia, and calcium is really important to help maintain strong bones. It will be mandatory on the new Nutrition Facts panel to list vitamin D and list potassium. Americans tend not to have enough vitamin D in their blood. And they can get vitamin D either from their diet, from supplements, or from the sunshine. Vitamin D is required in order to help us maintain strong and healthy bones. Potassium is an important mineral to help us maintain healthy blood pressure. And this is important because many Americans are at risk for hypertension or high blood pressure. Potassium is rich in many different types of vegetables and some fruits. So there's lots of information here. And what's the most important to consider when you're making food decisions? I'm gonna share some tips with you that I got from the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics about how to use the Nutrition Facts panel to make healthy food choices. First, look at the serving size and ask yourself, is this the actual amount I'm going to eat or will I eat more or less of it? Next, take a look at how many calories are in one serving. Consider the role of this particular food in the context of your overall diet that day. Is it meant to be just a snack or is it a larger part of your whole meal? Next, look at the percent daily values. Try to pick foods that have low percent daily values, 5% or less, for the nutrients we're trying to limit, such as trans fat, saturated fat, and added sugars. Look for foods that have a high percent daily value, 20% or more, of nutrients that we're trying to increase consumption of, such as dietary fiber. It's also a good idea to take a look at the ingredients to see if there's any partially hydrogenated oils, which could be a source of trans fat, as well as how many types of added sugar there might be. If you're like me and you're super psyched for the new Nutrition Facts panel to come out, there are some food producers that have already started using the new redesign, such as Triscuit, Bolt House Farms, Quaker Oats, and Cashy. The Centers for Science and the Public Interest have put together a Pinterest board with all the labels of the new redesign. Check out the link in my video description. Let me know in the comments how often you use the Nutrition Facts panel. How do you feel about the new redesign? Do you think it will help or hinder your ability to make healthy food choices? Thanks for tuning in to Nourishable, for science you can taste. If you like what you're learning, please share and subscribe and ring my bell to get alerts for new videos.